Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you're safe out there. Last couple of days, we've been talking about some what ifs, meaning what if you're attacked by a dog and you're on a bicycle? What if you're attacked by a dog and you're walking? You are attacked. Now, what do you do once you find yourself under siege? Today, I'm kind of switching up the scenario a little bit. That's one that we all find very common. Not all of us get attacked when we're on a bicycle, and not all of us get attacked by ourselves when we don't have a dog with us on a walk. But I'm telling you, if you walk your dog enough, you own enough dogs and you go for a walk, you're going to find yourself under the situation I want to talk a little bit about today. And that's where the stray dog, the untethered dog, the unrestrained dog comes barreling in your direction. And you're just going, oh, no. Oh, no. So if you have a reactive dog, it's even worse because now all of a sudden you're, you're about to be in the middle of WWE SmackDown. Guarantee it. But let's just, for this scenario, assume that our dog is a pretty normal dog, not very reactive, just a good dog. You're doing some good walking, doing some good heel training, and you're out there in the world, and suddenly here comes a very large dog, medium to large dog, I would say, and it is racing in your direction. And you can tell immediately that there's no owner behind it. So what do you do? You know, there's a lot of strategy involved here, and I want you to kind of understand that. I've kind of drawn a little map up here, and this map is based upon personal experience, the personal experience of many dog owners over the years who have shared their information with me, shared it with Joshua or our other trainers here. Uh, it's a, they bring to the pool of meaning. So that being said, if you've got strategies other than the ones that I'm about to go over with today, bring it to the pool of meaning. Share it with us out there. Don't just share my information. Share your information. I love when you guys do that. You say, hey, Brian, I got caught in that situation. Here's what worked for me. Yeah, every tool that we can have, every strategy that works, wow. Why would you only carry around two strategies when 10 of them will work like a champ? So that being said, this is not finite here. This is, this is just what has worked for me in particular situations and what has worked for a lot of my clients uh, be, before they were my clients and for a lot of my friends who also own dogs. So here's a couple of things here, just kind of going with nature itself. Anytime I find myself in a situation in which an animal is moving in my direction, soon as I know that, I now have some information. There's an animal moving in my direction. Okay, so now like I told you, what is it? That's a dog. Does the dog have an owner? No, I don't see an owner. And sometimes these, this little assessment is happening in milliseconds, really rapid fire. Sometimes you get a little bit more time. So first thing I want you to do, if you see an animal moving quickly in your direction with your dog, and you immediately assess after you freeze. So don't assess this on the move. You know, because for example, I tell all the time, I've written it before, there's two zones around every single mammal out there. There's a threat zone and there's a critical zone. At the edge of this boundary right here, when most animals detect another animal that could possibly be dangerous to it, one of the first things they will do is freeze. They freeze. Immobility. Step number one. Long before we display, show teeth, show hackles and everything. No, we freeze. Because we inherently understand the abilities of this other, other animal. Having more rods than cones in their eyes being able to detect movement from a great distance. So if I freeze, maybe this oncoming dog won't even know I'm here. doesn't mean it has the wind advantage. Maybe the wind is in my face. So there's a good chance, and I've seen this happen many times, where I thought the dog was headed towards me, but it didn't. It just veered off, and it went right on by. So again, freeze at first. Give yourself some time to think for a second here. Assess the situation. What does it appear Use your own experience. Is this non-aggressive maneuver? Is it just some dog loping along going, oh, it's hot out here, it's hot out here. Hey, do you people have a treat over there? You can tell. You can tell usually by their tail set. I've gone over this with you in previous videos. Assess it. Run this thing through what we call a threat matrix. Threat matrix. Is there a threat at all? Identification friend or foe? Do we have a friend dog moving in our direction? Or do we have a possible foe? And if it's a foe, that means it's a threat. And if it is a threat, is it a high, medium, or low threat? A lot of that can be determined by 
the determination of the animal itself. How's it coming? Is it staring dead at you? Are the ears back? Is that tail up? If you've been around enough dogs, you've been able to observe natural, spontaneous behavior, you should have a good idea what you're dealing with here. If I'm dealing with non-aggression, ah, now it's just going to become a, a nuisance. Oh, geez, I was on a walk. Now this thing's probably going to follow me all the way back to my home. And next thing you know, I'll have to adopt it. So it just becomes something like that. I've heard that story 50 million times. You probably have as well. Yeah, I was out for a walk. And next thing you know, this dog started following me. And now all of a sudden it decided to camp out at my house. So that's how I ended up with the dog, Ryan. Good for you. Hope it all worked out. Way to go. But let's say, no, it's not the friendly dog. This dog is coming at you with a purpose. And we've talked about what those purposes are. What they are. Something competitive something territorial. So that animal is moving in your direction with a purpose. Now I have noticed one thing. When say dog, when you have a dog with you, in the vast majority of these situations, the target is the dog, not you. They want to go to the dog. So kind of keep that in your mind as well. That in the vast majority of cases, is the target, not the human. You may have been the target, but as soon as the animal realizes, oh, there's a dog, that becomes the target. So, okay, so now you froze, you assessed, you decided aggressive, you threw it through a threat matrix, you assigned a high medium value to it, so now you're getting really concerned. Okay, the dog is also closing in. Now it's probably only about 25, 30 feet away at the very most. This would be a good time that if you trained your dog to down, I would down your dog. Take it out of the fight before the fight even begins. And let me tell you something, before your dog will do that, you must have already trained your dog to do it down under very similar conditions. Again, your dog may not know that there's an aggressive dog approaching, there's a dog coming, but it, its own assessment may be one in which, oh, I think I can handle this. And, or it may be queuing off of you. What are you worried about? Because again, the second we become afraid, we're uptight, our dogs feel that from us. They can feel that coming from us. They see all this information flowing out of us into them. So to do that, I recommend that you take your dog to a dog park where it's playing with other dogs and suddenly down it. Down it. Down it. Let other dogs come up. Stand on top of your dog. Straddle your dog. Again, you have to do this with a, non, with a non-reactive dog. You're not there to experiment with your reactive dog and let everyone else be a bite test dummy. This is your dog. You're simply taking distractions to an incredible level. I've done it with dogs at daycare. Put them out in the middle of daycare. Down. Other dogs are running past them, jumping over them. That's great. If you can do that, then at least you're one step towards accomplishing this super, super deactivator of a fight. This will de-escalate the situation in a real hurry. And I've told before in a video, I had a very, a very powerful German Shepherd named Dax. And there's a big bully breed that was rushing right towards us, just like this. I assessed the situation. I determined this is really going to be bad. I downed my dog, the big bully came over, straddled my dog, my dog did nothing. He wanted to, but he did nothing. And then the dog came over and promptly peed on me. So it de-escalated the situation. Okay, so you, that being said, you assess, you tell your dog to down. Even if it does down, even if it does not down, move in front of your dog. So now you take a stance in front of your dog. You move in front of your dog. You challenge the dog that's coming. Remember, it's usually the dog that's the target. They think it's easy pickings. I can just go straight to that dog. Most of these dogs like this that are coming towards you have never dealt with someone like you. You step in front and go, no! You challenge that animal. Challenge it. You suddenly turn into a bear. And right then, in the millisecond, that animal does its own assessment. Remember we talked about aggression, resource holding potential, fighting experience, 
fighting ability. And when an animal can't assess your abilities, they assess their own. You step in front and say, no, not happening to me and my dog. Every time I've done that, it never went past that. The only time it got past that is when I didn't catch it, meaning the dog appeared two feet away and it was right there. So I didn't have time for it. But every time I've done that, it worked. And remember yesterday about the umbrella, about the mace, that's the time to deploy. You step in front, you go, no. And that doesn't work. That dog keeps coming anyway. Now you step in front, boom, fire off that mace. You don't have mace, open that umbrella. You don't have an umbrella, well, the animal's coming. So at that point there, make sure you take you out of the target situation. Immediately fold up, and if the dog pounces on your dog, immediately attacks your dog, give your dog a fighting chance. Let go of the leash. Let go of the leash. And rest assured knowing this, most dog fights sound and look more horrendous than they are. And all the years I owned a vet hospital, all the dog fight injuries that we had to deal with, only a few would have been life threatening. Only a few. The vast majority, a stitch here, a suture there, a drain there but the animal recovered from the wounds. It's typically right about here when this happens, we don't let go, or if we do, we get real stupid at this moment. And we throw ourselves on the grenade. We reach in there. We're gonna separate the dogs and all of a sudden we come under attack. And you can come under attack from your very own dog. Cause remember, in the good old arousal column, as soon as I get anywhere near that panic reactive zone right here, well, I'm not really conscious as far as knowing exactly what I'm doing. I'm on autopilot. This is where humans black out, but they're still moving. They're still forming strategies and actions, but you just don't, you're just not going to remember it. This is where they are immune to training. So at that point there, this is primordial. This is me fighting you, it's a full-on battle, and all of a sudden there's a finger here? Oh, there's not one who's, hey, excuse me, give me a second, I think, I, I think I'm getting the upper hand right here. Oh no, you just stuck your fingers right down there in a buzzsaw. And even if you start to pull one animal off, you throw them into self-defense aggression. So now they turn and attack you. And your dog's fine, yeah, it's got a little chip out of us here, maybe. Maybe a little slash here, but you, you're dead, crippled, disabled. Absolutely. So think, guys, you, use your brain here. Let go of the leash. I know it's hard, but it's the best strategy right now. Remember, everything else has failed. We had many other things to have go in our favor. This is your worst case scenario right here. It's what you're dealing with. So the chips are down. Everything failed. Now it's time to at least save yourself. We already had that discussion. What do you mean to everyone else? What role do you play in this world? Save yourself. And trust in the fact that most dog fights look and sound horrendous, but it's usually over in no time at all. Or at least it de-escalates to a point to where now maybe you might be able to try something else. Something else. Loop a leash around the other dogs, hind end, pull, all sorts of little things. But that's usually with a breed that's just going to grab and not let go. But I have found out even with those breeds, they don't chomp down, they just grab, and they don't let go. But when everything de-escalates, they tend to let go. So all that being said, just a quick review. You see something coming. Freeze. Assess. Threatening, non-threatening, threatening. How bad is it threatening? <laughs> what kind of threat is this? A high or medium threat? Oh no. Tell your dog to down. Take your dog out of the fight. Even if your dog doesn't down, move in front of your dog. Remember, obstacles are deterrent to aggression. 
Give that dog a big obstacle. It's called you. You with an attitude. You saying, hey, I'm a bear. Meet me. You're not going to attack me, and you're not going to attack my dog. And you come across very convincingly. That fails. That dog's attacked more than a few bears. It keeps coming. Deploy your mace right then. Deploy your umbrella if you have it. You're pulling for your mace. The dog rushes right past you. It's way faster than what you anticipated. It launches onto your dog. Pull your mace and mace them both. Fire right in there, right between them. Right there, in the, right in the face. Both of them. Yeah. Okay? They'll stop the fight. They'll stop it right then. Your dog will recover. That dog will recover. And if it happened to ricochet and come up and get you, you will recover. But that's far less then what can happen if it continues? You don't have any of that, let go of your leash. Give your dog a chance to act naturally. Give it a chance to say, uncle. Give it a chance to do its own curl up and cover up. It knows what to do. It's biologically prepared learning. You don't have to teach it what to do in that situation. You just have to give it the ability to do it. And when it's all restrained on a leash and you're freaking out and you're yanking and pulling, your dog who wants to submit is suddenly being pulled higher than the other animal and the other animal thinks, oh, geez, I guess you're not going to submit. Well, I was, but I can't. I didn't mean to get on top of you, but my owner yanked me on top of you. Let go of the leash. When it was in the womb, it knew what to do in this situation. Trust that. Let your dog do what it needs to do. And you stay safe. Okay, guys, last couple of days has been some dark stuff here to cover, but you got to cover it. You got to talk about it. Because we don't live in a land of just unicorns and fairy tales and things like that. It's the real world. Dogs do run around loose. They, are, they have unfettered access to us. They do. So many do. And if you ride long enough, you walk long enough, you walk your dog long enough, you could possibly encounter a situation like this. Be ready for it. Train your brain. I'm ready for it. Be looking for it. Enjoy your walk. You can tell when there's nothing around, but you start getting into a densely populated area. I know. I have predictive information. I'm ready to go. Be ready. Don't walk out there. You want to walk and take a coat with you. It's got pockets in it and have your mace in it. Even if it's a 50% chance of rain, have your umbrella. Take it with you. Go on your walk. No, I'm ready to go. And if it all goes south, I'm going to let go. And pray at that point that it'll all work out. Because it will. In the vast majority of cases, it does. Okay, guys, that's it for today. If you found this information beneficial to you, you know what to do. Please share it with someone so everyone can remain safe. And as always, if you have a question, send them to me. Drop them down that thread or send them to me with Brian at Y at TamingTheWild.com. Stay safe out there, and I'll check in with you guys tomorrow.